Ah, what's up guys? My Amplified Unit. Welcome back to the channel. Salute! BC's feeling very appreciative today. So I want to I wanna start this upload off with a big thank you to every single one of my subscribers out there. If you've ever taken a moment to smash that subscription button down below, this is a special salute to all of you guys, man. I appreciate you guys big time. Uh, I never ask for that. So I just think that's very cool that you guys feel this is the best place to talk pro wrestling with the most logic and the most common sense and the most facts utilized in the conversation. I just think that's badass. So salute to every single one of you guys, my subscribers, my amplified unit. Salute. Thank you. Just feeling appreciative, that's all. To my channel members, the highest of regards is where you're placed. My board of directors, if you've ever smashed that, that channel membership down below, that's a whole nother level of appreciation. Salute, for sure. All right, that's it. Well, sort of. If you've ever smashed the up, if you ever left a comment, if you ever said, what up, BC? Salute. All right, all right, I'm just playing. I mean, I am appreciative of all of that as well, especially lately. A lot of good conversation down in the comments over the last few uploads. You guys really having some some good input um, on so many of the topics we're talking about. So you guys have just been awesome lately. Um, so because of that, I stay amplified and I keep rocking these uploads for you guys, man. I certainly don't have to do this. This isn't a job. <laughs> When you get more successful, it kind of becomes such in a way. So much work gets put into it or goes into it. But you guys make it seamless um, and, and it doesn't feel as such for sure. So this is still a hobby of mine that I am so passionate about. And because you guys come so amplified every single upload, man, BC, I, all I got to do is... Red light goes on, microphone turned up, let's get amplified. So, I'm not exactly, uh, I'm not done with the shout outs yet though. Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, you know we gotta talk about her and that's where we're gonna start off. Well first, Miles Angel and Clint Green on the super thanks down below. Down in the comments there's that thanks option. It's like basically a super chat for a regular upload. That's never needed. It's always appreciated. It's never needed. You guys went out of your way to chuck a coffee at BC in the channel. I believe it was yesterday's upload. So a special shout out to Clint Green and Miles Angel. And by the way, Miles, Miles says, glad I'm finally getting these notifications for your vids now, BC. Uh, salute. So yeah, so so they're not they're not taking. I'm going to leave tube alone on this, man. As long as they're finally giving the notifications, that's all that matters. Let bygones be bygones. <laughs> uh, Miles Angel, I'm glad you're getting the notifications, man. Appreciate the coffee big time. Appreciate you uh, being a part of this unit. And of course, Clint Green uh, with a thanks. Uh, thanks right back to you, Clint Green. So I had to give those special shout outs. All right, now, now. Mercedes Monet, AEW Dynamite debut success for Mercedes Monet. She pulled in her segment, a million plus viewers for Mercedes Monet in that opening Q1 seg. A million for Mercedes. She was able to not just uh, keep the Big Bang Theory lead in, but she sustained it throughout the entire Q1 segment. That doesn't usually happen, obviously. Unfortunately for AEW, it's the same thing that's been hurting them for month, for really since they started the the company. They just can't keep the consistency. They can't keep fans needing to put that remote down. You know, it's just a want. Oh, I want to see this match. I want to see this promo, but I don't need to see the show. And that's exactly what happened after Mercedes segment, which popped over a milli, they immediately started to go downhill. They went from 750 down to seven by Q4. They were already around 700,000 ish. And 
by the end of the show, they were around 650 to 670, something like that. That was Willow versus Rio. Uh, obviously, that is just a, a wrong call, right? On such a big business kind of night, you're not going to put Rio versus Willow in the main event. And I understand you want to have Mercedes come down and get physical. That's great. But that cannot be what you want your fans to tune in for two full hours to wait around to watch Willow and Rio. Even if Mercedes might might come down and do something. You can't have Willow and Rio in your main event and expect or be shocked when your rating is 600 and 50, 670, whatever it was, thousand viewers, down from the million that Mercedes was able to keep from the Big Bang Theory lead-in. She was able to sustain that. Can the rest of the show help out Mercedes? Mercedes cannot put the entire show on her back. If anybody expects that, well, how did that work out for CM Punk? It didn't. He leveled off at 950, then started going backwards. Edge never popped anything, unfortunately. He got signed and the ratings went backwards. I feel bad for the dude. He got blamed for a lot of that. It's not his fault. It's not CM Punk's fault. It's not Paige Soraya's fault. It's definitely not Okada's fault. Everybody's saying oh, since Okada got signed, the ratings keep going backwards or stagnant. Okada is a niche signing. We all know that. We all love, or most of us, love Okada. We know how good he is. We, we know such a cool, badass person he is. But him coming over was never supposed to bring casual fans to the product. It's Okada from Japan. That was never going to happen. That's a, a niche feeding signing, right? Feed the niche. Problem is, there's already enough wrestlers on the AEW roster that feeds the niche. So now you have to capitalize with the names, the big names that are going to draw casuals. You have to utilize them correctly. The only way this is going to work, because it doesn't matter if you have CM Punk, Edge, Brian Danielson, Mox. It wouldn't even matter if you brought Seth Rollins over right now or Cody Rhodes went back. Guys, what you need is two things to back them up. Good booking for them and everybody else and consistency within your show. Every segment has to lead into one another. You have to start off hot with a, a hook, and you have to end your show with a cliffhanger. And in between, you should have two to three bare minimum stories that everybody is really captivated by, and you keep going back to them throughout certain segments. It has to be a complete show from top to bottom, beginning to end, start to finish. Otherwise, Mercedes can only do so much. This week, she was able to keep that million that the Big Bang Theory let in for you. And Mercedes was able to captivate people enough. But when she went off the air, so did all the viewers with her. And that's not good. The show dropped all the way to 650 some odd. 350,000 viewers took off with Mercedes. So salute to Mercedes. There was no question that she was... Uh, going to at least pull them back to 9, 950, whether they had the Big Bang Theory or not. She was going to pull something pretty pretty big for them. Was the rest of the show going to back her up with it? That was going to be the question mark. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, but to, to clinch that Millie and keep the Millie throughout her segment, Mercedes does it again. Uh, and that's just what she does. She captivates. So uh, I'm not shocked, I guess, that she pulled the Millie. But uh, damn, pretty damn cool. I just hope that everything else falls into place. They have a full week to really say, all right, this is what we got. We're, we're promoting Mercedes next week. We got this big promo for Mercedes. We have to kick something in the high gear with her, and we need the rest of the show to fall, fall in line. We need something massive. Every segment should have fans talking about it. Or thinking, having questions about what's happening in a good way too, not confusing like Paul Levesque McMahon. We're about to get to him in a minute. He's he's catching a lot of heat from fans right now. Paul Levesque McMahon. We'll talk about that in a minute. But questions that are good, right? You're intrigued. You, you want to find out the answers. This is what AEW has to start doing, and then you'll see many segments over the whole Q1 to Q8, at least four or five will be pretty good in terms of numbers, right? You'll pull uh, bare minimum up front, 8 to 850 for four or five. If you can do that, you'll stay steady. You'll get back to that 850, and then you can start thinking nine, 
and so forth. It's going to be a while before they hit a consistent million, guys, for the full show. Because even this week, even with Mercedes keeping that Big Bang Theory lead in for the entire Q1, the show fell off so flat that their end rating was, I believe, 801,000. So they did clinch it. Last week, they were only 7 semod, right? 760, 770, something like that. So thanks to Mercedes, they were able to eclipse 800 again. But it's going to take a lot more if you want to get back to 859 consistently and then work from there. I hope that makes sense, guys. I know it's all over the place, but it's... AEW has a lot of of issues right now. They have so much talent. They just have to utilize them correctly to the point where the fans actually care. Because now even the niche audience is saying, eh. But Mercedes, what a moment that was. Mercedes is one of those people that can help. You just got to do right by her now. Use her properly, right? Same thing WWE stopped doing. We hope that AEW doesn't prevent that from the beginning. I hope they have something planned big and that Mercedes is going to be a big part of just one aspect that makes Dynamite in AEW really good going forward. Because right now, the show, the company, has a lot of issues. And one or two or even three big signings are not going to help that. Congratulations to Mercedes, though, man. Pop that Millie right from the jump. Um, The Rock, real quick. Let's talk The Rock. The Rock is, uh, here comes everybody with the part-timer. To See, here comes the part-timer. He's leaving again after WrestleMania. Freaking part-timer. That's what, we know. He's a, he's the biggest box office attraction in the world. Of course he's going to make Hollywood blockbusters. Forgive him, forgive him not. I'm sure he doesn't care. If you feel he should be wrestling 52 times a year or be in WWE for the full 12 months, he's giving you all of these smackdowns. He's wrestling at mania. He doesn't need the money, obviously. He's doing this because he still loves to do it. He still loves this. He doesn't have to go in there and have matches and, and go in front of crowds that don't appreciate him. He doesn't need this. Part-timer. WWE has so many issues right now. The Rock is a welcomed sight. Hearing The Rock cut promos is a pulse to this otherwise dead show. Because what's the alternative? Are you going to have Bronson Reed cut a 10-minute promo? Oh, exhilarating. Are you going to have Ricochet? Oh, Ricochet. Yeah, yeah. Get, get. Is this on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricochet. Rock the mic for 12 minutes. That said nobody ever. Ricochet. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, but he can flip and dive, BC. Come on, come on. Who's getting on the microphone? Bring Ali back. Let him rock the microphone for 13 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll p- position him right for WrestleMania. Who, who, who? Tommaso and Johnny Gargano. Put him on the mic for 12 minutes. Rivet us with your words. Come on. Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put them on. Put them on. Put them on. Let's hear the New Day shtick again, right? C- come on. Let's hear them for 15 minutes. Who? 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 Let's p- put Jey Uso on. L- let's hear Yeet for 16 minutes. Because c- c- his promo on Monday, w- w- I mean, it's going to go down into the annals of the best promos ever, right? Jay Uso cut the best promo ever. Like he said, he said, Jimmy at WrestleMania, I'm gonna beat the yeet out of you. Whoa, he's gonna beat the yeet. Man, wrestling business is booming. It's cool again, right? Wrestling business is cool. Put that on a t-shirt. I'm gonna beat the yeet out of you. Oh no, not the yeet. Not the yeet. I gotta keep all the yeet. Who's getting on the come on, man? Come on, stop. I don't care if The Rock is part-time. The Rock puts a pulse, a lifeline into this show that is absolutely NyQuil-inducing. Nobody appreciates it. Nobody cares. Uh, he's a part-timer. He's taking a spot from Russell Mania. Whose spot is he taking? Paul Levesque McMahon has half the card not even announced. We're three weeks away from Mania, just so you know. Uh, three weeks from tomorrow. Three weeks from tonight is the Hall of Fame. He's still trying to throw names there. It's the most random Hall of Fame you're ever going to see. Thunderbolt Patterson, uh, Bull Nakano, uh, U.S. Express, 
Um, uh, who, who just, who else? Who else? Muhammad Ali, Paul Heyman, who's still very much active. Um, that maybe the rocks like aunt or grandmother or something. She's being added in. So the rock can present because they really want the rock to be a presenter on that night. Um, so I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's a random class. It's, it's very ra- cool for all of them, by the way, much, much appreciated all their services to the pro wrestling world. It'll be a cool moment for all of them. I'll be giving them a standing O, but collectively it's, it's the most random class ever. It's like Paul Levesque McMahon waited last minute, which he did. And he's just chucking baloney at the wall, whatever name it lands on. That's who's going into the hall. Muhammad. Yes. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. Put him in Thunderbolt. Put him in. Oh, uh, what the, what is this? Uh, Bull Nakano. Bill, put Bull in. Because it landed on Bull Nakano. That's why. Don't question the doofus son-in-law. So the Hall of Fame's three weeks from tonight. We're still trying to piece it together. WrestleMania's three weeks from tomorrow. Do you realize half the car, not even, we don't even know where they're going. We don't even know where they're going with half the, it's two nights. The Rock is taking up a spot. It's two nights. You're going to have seven or eight matches at least a piece on each night. Seven to eight matches, bare minimum. That gives you 16 matches. The Rock is taking a roster spot. Most likely, they're having Roman walk away with the title anyway, so Cody will fail again. Not like it matters whether he walks away with the title or not. I hope you're just done with this story for now. Just just put it away. Throw it into the garbage. Nobody wants to hear about this fucking story anymore. But on top of that, it looks like he's going for Hulk Hogan's record. They have two outs. Seth Rollins can turn on Cody. Um, the rock could cost Cody. And then you set up rock and Cody in the future, maybe even next year. There's so many outs that Roman can take that title back on vacation till after SummerSlam, collect Hulk Hogan's record. And then we'll go from there. The rock. The whole point of this poor part of this upload is the rock. It has big movies coming up after mania. Nobody's shocked. Oh, you shouldn't be shocked. This was always to come back, give back to all of us. Yeah, he's going to make some good money. But this was to give back. He got on the board. He wants to do something big for TKO. And he was going to do this big Roman match that many of us, including BC, wanted to see. It's our legit dream match. But no, there was the meltdown crowd and, and they changed everything up. And now WrestleMania is even more confusing, befuddling, nonsensical, and stupid than ever before. But the, the Rock is giving us his... Just enjoy the, the Rock, man. Just, just for a moment, shut up and enjoy The Rock. He's giving you the best promos you've ever heard. Stop. Cody Rhodes, as much as I appreciate the dude, I respect the dude, I support the dude, man. I, how many times do you want to hear, well, Miami, who do you want to talk about? How many times, man? How many times are you going to hear... It? Who else even has a catch line? I don't even know. L.A. Knight. We respect L.A. Knight. We just put up an upload yesterday about how he's frustrated with his booking and how Paul Levesque McMahon just waited and waited and waited. To this day, he, Paul Levesque McMahon won't really do anything with him. You know, how many times are you going to hear with everybody saying, you know, how many times are you going to hear, I am the architect. I am the visionary. I like it, visionary. I read the dictionary. I dress like a blueberry. We know, Seth. How many times you guys want to hear that? The Rock is actually selling himself, his opponents, his story. At least we have The Rock to entertain us. So yes, he's going back to Hollywood. He never left. He just wanted to give back for WrestleMania. It's been 12 years since we've seen this guy wrestle. 12 years. You act like he comes back every year and takes WrestleMania spots. Now it's two nights, 16 matches bare minimum, and Paul Levesque McMahon still has 10 matches up front he doesn't know where they're going with. 10 matches! He still needs to pencil in in three weeks, but it's The Rock being a part-timer that has you bitching and moaning. Stop. Cut the shit. Sit down. Asinine. To The Rock. We appreciate you. Salute to Dwayne Johnson. Rock it out tonight on SmackDown. He'll be there with Roman. Rock it out. Have fun with the with the clown show. And whoever is going diarrhea, diarrhea. Right. I feel bad for all the ladies in attendance tonight with all the screaming dudes screaming diarrhea to the ring. 
But that's pro wrestling in 2024. It's cool, I'm being told again. Wrestling's cool and it's booming. We're going to beat the yeet. Diarrhea. Yeah, salut. Mm -hmm. And if somebody like The Rock comes back, no, man, you're from the Attitude Era. We don't like that. We can't talk about the Attitude Era. This is the booming area. What's that? Era. What I say? Area? It's the booming era. I said era. You didn't say area. It's the booming era. Yeah, it's the booming era. All right. I'm going to tell you where it's booming too. The Rock is going back to Hollywood, they're saying. No, he never left Hollywood. He just took a little bit of a detour to give us all something special. But so many people claim they don't want it. Interesting. Those same people, by the way, when he comes out of that curtain, are on their feet, jaws drop, cell phones in the air, catching every moment. And then afterwards, they're like, ah, I don't like the Rocky sucks. Rocky sucks. Rocky sucks. Seems to me like he's one of the most successful people on the planet. Hmm. Does he suck? Or does the person screaming he sucks suck? Hey, PC with the questions over here. Told you I was amplified today, man. Well, I always am, but uh, extra coffee today. Guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want this one to be too long. We got the SmackDown review tonight. I'm going to put it up pretty late tonight, possibly, or early morning. But um, Paul Levesque McMahon, he's, uh, you talk about under. Uh, he's always kind of under some type of uh, extreme heat because he's just, he's lost, right? And he makes a lot of bad calls in WWE. He's just, he's not the guy to lead WWE, unfortunately. And we understand, you know, everybody wants to bring up black and gold. I don't want to do this again, but without the William Regals and the Dusty Rhodeses and on Vince McMahon's dime, more so back then than ever before, um, without all of that, it's just him. And just him, he can't do this wrestling thing creatively. It's just he's lost and then he gets overwhelmed and then he makes more bad calls and he just has this fascination with the not wanting to follow good guy versus bad guy, which at the bare minimum, that's the foundation of wrestling. You take that away, there is no wrestling. Everything can't just be a collegiate, uh, you know, just a, a college wrestling uh, matchup where you're just shaking hands afterwards. But he does these face versus face matches nonstop, heels versus heels nonstop. You're not just splitting your audience anymore. You're confusing them. You confuse them, you lose them. So everything this guy does, from, from the failed cash-in by Austin Theory on a mid-card title, the U.S. title, on a Monday Night Raw, the middle of Raw, and he fails, and then Levesque McMahon has him come out the next week, and his excuse was, I was never going to beat Roman anyway, let's be honest. So he went for the title that he already held four times before, previous, in the past year. Makes no sense. And then, a few months later... Austin claims he wants to be in the Rumble so he can earn a shot at Roman's championship. So now you want to go through 29 guys just to earn the opportunity to Roman, to face Roman, when you already had the opportunity with the briefcase and you said you didn't want Roman. That all changed in three months? Nothing makes sense. BC and his amplified unit used common sense and logic and were just calling Paul Levesque McMahon out on it. And the Cody Rhodes botch, obviously, at WrestleMania 39. We know what that led to. The entire year, nothing developed between Roman and Cody to get us excited for a part two. And then we all know the debacle that has been ever since January of this year. And you can go on and on with the booking botches of Paul Levesque McMahon. L.A. Knight, the way he handled L.A. Knight. And did not have him with that United States Championship Fatal 4 victory that would have placed him with the final two. Instead, they went Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Why was LA Knight not in that match? So they did not have LA Knight win the U.S. title, not even compete for it. They did not have LA Knight win the Money in the Bank briefcase when he clearly should have won it. And he was a face. It would have been the biggest pop when he comes down the aisle and cashes in on somebody. They didn't have LA Knight win. They put it on Damian Priest. To this day, as much love, much respect to Damian Priest, Damian Priest is irrelevant with that cash in, with that briefcase. Nobody even thinks of the briefcase with Damian Priest. Nobody's actually thinking that's going to be a great time when Damian cashes in. No, they dropped the ball. They did not want to give LA Knight anything. Instead, they catapulted him to a main event title match in Saudi Arabia, flat on his back, looking up at the lights, while Roman Reigns celebrated around him. That's what happened. 
and you wonder why LA Knight's pissed off. This guy was on top of the world, and somehow Paul Levesque McMahon absolutely ruined him. Sami Zayn? No different. Sami Zayn was on top of the world under Vincent Kennedy McMahon last year at this time. And since HHH really catapulted into control, Sami Zayn has been on a whirlwind downhill trajectory. And what Paul Levesque McMahon thought was going to catapult Sami Zayn was have him lose a bunch. We're going to put you on a losing streak and then we're going to try to build you back up, right? We're going to make you like Rocky, right? So we're going to make you lose a bunch. How did that work out for you? You're going to make this guy go on a losing streak and then win a couple of matches and boom, he gets the IC title match. How did that work out? Because this past Monday, this brings us full circle to now. I'm just giving you guys some examples of why Paul Levesque McMahon is not fit for this job of head of creative. And right now, every McMahon should be removed, including Doofus' son-in-laws. Hey, CM Punk's words, not mine. But now, now everybody is coming out under the woodwork and... And they're voicing their displeasure at a major decision that was made on Monday Night Raw. And that was between Chad Gable and Sami Zayn. The final two in a gauntlet match. Sami Zayn defeats Chad Gable. And the wrestling world was like, what the f- Are you kidding me? You set it up perfectly for Chad Gable. Now, BC was fine fitty-fitty on either. It could have went either way, Sami and Chad. Now, I did a live stream. Right before that Raw, my unit showed up big. That was on like 15 minutes of notice, by the way. Even less, I believe. 13 and a half, maybe. But, man, you guys showed up big time in that live stream. And it was good that you did, because I asked you guys, Gable or Sammy, and you would not believe how many people were back in Chad Gable. And the unit is a microcosm of the grander scale of the wrestling world and community. So let me tell you, we found out quickly if Paul Levesque McMahon just did things like that, listened more vividly. I'm not saying you got to go along with everything your fans say, right? Like the like if people have a meltdown because somebody like The Rock is going to be in the main event, you can't necessarily change all your plans. I get it. But just read the room. Like the Cody Rhodes Roman Mania 39 match. You got to read the room. There was no way Cody could leave WrestleMania 39 without that title. Especially if you know Roman's going on vacation for the rest of the year, basically. And Cody has to show up all around the world. So many countries. And you're going into the Brock feud. The whole point of the Brock feud was Cody having the title. Read the room! Instead, the air was taken out of that stadium and everybody watching around the world. And to this day, they never got that mojo back. HHH is horrible at reading the room. And now I'm starting to wonder, does he even care to read the room? Because BC in the unit did that poll right before Raw. And it was an eye-opening experience. We saw, whoa, hold up, time out. I don't know what's planned tonight, but you might want to go Chad Gable. Sure enough, HHH didn't care, didn't bother to do his own poll or research or read the room. And they went Sammy. Chad Gable is the one that the wrestling world was ready to absolutely rock out for. You saw it right there in the arena. It was not the, it was not the reception that Sammy thought he was going to get. Sammy, did you guys hear Booker T? Booker T came right out and said they had a conversation afterwards. Sammy Zayn told Booker T, dude, I don't know what... I don't know what happened. I, th- I thought we did something really good out there. I get on the interweb machine and everybody is flipping out. L- like, I thought they loved me, he told Booker. But everybody is flipping out about this. And Booker T had to kind of calm him down. He's like, dude, don't worry about that noise. You know, you busted your, your, your ass in there with Gable. You guys created magic. It's your time, this and that. But I guess it really affected Sammy because he was not expecting this type of adverse effect from that decision and that goes to show you that like nobody truly read the room because we found out before raw bc was like whoa all right i was 50 50 no matter who they want to go with i'm fine with but we found out something before raw no the way that they set this up everybody was ready to rock with gable it was gable's time it was gable's story and they didn't like the, the, the Sami Zayn losing streak only hurt Sami. It did not help his cause. Paul Levesque McMahon did wrong, did dirty by Sami or to Sami. 
That's what I mean. I, I told you guys from the jump. It was so odd seeing Sammy lose all these matches. We knew it was just a, for a rebuild up. But this is not how you do it. Somebody like Sammy doesn't need to go on a losing streak. You just book them properly. I knew this was not going to work out. And I knew it was going to absolutely ricochet right back into Paul Levesque McMahon's face. And that's what happened. The wrestling world, I mean, pissed. Making it known to Paul Levesque McMahon. People that still respect and put this guy on a pedestal. They were like, Paul, sorry, dude. Not sorry. Wrong call. Paul Levesque McMahon got it totally wrong on this one. What was Levesque McMahon thinking? This was Gable's time. By the way, they didn't necessarily put the McMahon in there. I'm, I'm kind of adding that in. But these are this is what you're seeing in the community. People flipping out. It took this it took this for people to wake up and realize Levesque McMahon has lost the room. And he lost it because you got a question, did he ever have it? He certainly doesn't read it. I don't know how you guys feel about it, man. Are you still okay with Sami Zayn? We all love Sami, obviously. And it's a fall from grace from last year's Mania, for sure. Winning tag titles with Kevin Owens' main event of night one. And now people are like, dude... You were on a losing streak, booked so poorly the rest of the year and start of this year that you just all of a sudden being catapulted to an IC title match doesn't do anything for us. That's what the fans are saying. They'd rather see Gable. Now, do they do some type of schmaz where it's a triple threat? I don't want to see that. You made your bed, now you got to lie in it. Just have Sammy and Gunther. It sucks. The wrong decision was clearly called and Gable did not get that, that chance. But it looks like they're already adding Kevin Owens to Logan Paul and Randy Orton. You can't just keep having schmoz matches for titles just because you're lazy and you didn't think ahead. The tag team titles for the dudes. That just doesn't have a number one contender at Mania. It has a number two contender. The number three, four, and five contenders. They're all facing each other. It's a six tag team ladder match. They don't care anymore. They're just adding a bunch of schmoz matches. We're still hearing there's a chance Liv Morgan and Nia Jax could be added to Becky and Rhea. And don't even get me started on the women's tag titles. Levesque McMahon has no clue what he's doing for that one. They planted a little bit of a seed for Naomi and Bianca Belair to get together. I thought it would have been cool to have Tiffany Stratton and Naomi. They already have a little bit of history. But it looks like maybe Bianca and Naomi. Some people think Bianca might turn on Naomi. So does that mean they don't get the tag titles from the Kabuki Warriors? <sighs> Levesque McMahon's lost. We know that, right? We are 22 days away from WrestleMania. Three weeks from tomorrow is WrestleMania 40. The 40th anniversary. I cannot remember a build this week. I cannot remember being this close to WrestleMania and having no feeling or emotion at all attached to WrestleMania. We are the Amplified Unit. This is B Mother C. And until next time, and there will be that next time, Top Guys, we're out. BC saying check you. Peace.